So it's been about two months since my last video, so I hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys are staying safe in these difficult times. And this is a video topic that I was supposed to make like four months ago uh, when this was initially released. And this is Farin OS, the uh, Plasma version. So there's the classic version and this is the new version. Uh, but because I'm so late, I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of is this a good distro that is beginner friendly that... Uh, could replace something like Ubuntu or elementary OS, or, or I believe uh, it's what it's based off of, uh, Linux Mint. And so we're going to get a quick tour of it, and uh, yeah, we're going to see the newer version, uh, the Plasma version specifically. So um, just by looking at it, this is a, a really interesting and unique take on Plasma. Um, one detail that I guess I want to mention really quickly is that this is um, a pseudo rolling release uh, distro, which means that uh, only certain software gets the latest updates and is more up to date. Um, for example, well, this ISO is old, uh, so I believe that the Plasma desktop components are probably uh, rolling release, so you probably get the uh, latest version of uh, the desktop environment and whatnot. I don't know exactly which components are, um, but this is really good because it offers a good mix between stability and a good mix between uh, new features and new software and whatnot. So uh, yes, the version that's presented here is KDE Plasma 5.18.3. Again, I did not update the ISO. I believe I've had this ISO for a while now. Uh, so I'm using a virtual machine, that's why the performance isn't going to be that great, but it's whatever. So right here at the top, we have a nice uh, calendar clock widget. And at the bottom, we have our system tray, onboard keyboard and whatnot. Okay, how do you remove this? <laughs> there we go. And we have this icon type um, panel. So on the desktop, there's some interesting stuff that we could take a look at. So there's this welcome screen that um, appears every time you start up the system. And it's got some important information. So one thing that I really like about this, I before making this video, I did uh, play around with the system. And I do think that things are pretty easy to navigate and it's got every tool that you would need. Uh, so right here, you have the introduction, features, a bunch of help support. You can donate if you'd like. Uh, and there's this online store, which uh, is it's not available yet. So you can also send feedback, obviously install the operating system. Now there's, uh, for those of you who love customization like me, uh, there's a ton of options for that. Now, uh, there's this global theme type setting here where you have... Um, various different options here where the layout is the same, um, but you can choose to apply uh, different types of colors. Um, and I don't know if I have to restart for this to work, but uh, you have these, oh, there we go, it's applying. Um, yeah, you have these various different um, color schemes, like kind of like in uh, cinnamon, where you have a light version and a dark version, and then you have the color accent, which I believe that the KD team is going to eventually implement as an option, uh, being able to choose the accent color, uh, which is really nice. But as you can see in the menus now, um, everything is orange. So I really like that. This is uh, very nicely implemented. And then there's this other option here called desktop layout, which this is pretty nice too, because if you're coming from Windows or Mac OS or uh, even if you're just a fan of GNOME and uh, maybe you want to try KDE uh, but have something that's more familiar, well, this is more so Unity, of course. That's uh, what GNOME is um, inspired by as well. But, well, Unity isn't really supported anymore, at least not officially, I believe. But as you can see, you have uh, this layout here. The clock is on the right side instead of the middle, but, I mean, that's fine. And then there's familiar, which, let's see what this is. Perhaps it's Windows, maybe? And sorry if it's kind of sluggish again on a virtual machine. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is kind of like a Windows type. Um, yes, definitely. This is like Windows 10. Uh, so you have a Windows 10 type layout and then you have a Mac OS type layout as well. And even for tablets, but I'm not going to play around too much with these settings. I'm just probably going to show this and I'm going to probably go back to the familiar layout or probably to the default layout. Uh, this panel dock, by the way, is um, the latte dock, which is very good. Now, one thing that I, that I definitely want to mention is I like how there's transparent effects enabled by default. Um, but I feel like they should be bundled with blur to make it look a bit more polished because it's kind of hard to read uh, the text uh, depending on the background. But I looked through the settings and I couldn't find any blur effects, so I'm not quite sure about that. It's probably going to appear if it's running on real hardware and it's installed. There's also a wide variety of wallpapers here. There's just too many to show, so I'm not going to showcase all of them. But I probably will switch to something else. I'll just switch to this just to showcase. Now, when it comes to the menu, I really like the simple menu because, well, it has it in its name. It's simple. Um, so initially, you have your settings. If you're a beginner, it's going to be pretty simple to find the settings. They're right here. And the layout is different than your typical um settings layout for, uh, or settings manager for KDE. Uh, but there's this search feature. So if you're looking for something specific, it's really easy to find it. Um, we have the office applications, uh, Kate as a text editor, VLC. So you have all the standard, uh, applications, uh, all the standard stuff that you would need. Now, one thing that's really interesting here is there's this, I guess, web web browser manager, if you can call it that. So let that load up. It's going to be some time. But there we go. So this is really nice because uh, the default uh, web browser is Vivaldi. I'm personally a fan of it. Not everyone is, but you could just easily uninstall it here by the press of a button. Click yes, and you're good to go. And then if you want to install something else, you have all of the main browsers, really. I mean, sure, if you want to install something else that's not listed here, well, these are the most popular ones anyway. Uh, so you wouldn't really need this. You could just install from terminal or whatever. Um, but I really like this. This is very neat, um, especially when I was uh, trying to switch to Linux initially. Um, I really like the Brave browser. And it was kind of difficult to install on certain uh, distros and just having it as easy to install as a click of a button. And I'm not going to install it right now. Um, it's very convenient. So we have the office applications. Now for settings, there's a bunch of settings here. You have a boot repair, disks, uh, which I believe is a, a disk partitioner. Uh, we have also the quantum manager, which is Again, nice for theming. So if you love theming and just playing around with the system, this is a very good implementation of the uh, KDE desktop environment. In fact, this is the most unique implementation that I've ever seen. Um, and there's also the store here. And also speaking of the desktop layout, um, I don't know where exactly I saw it. Um, I believe maybe it was this right here, the theme color something. Uh, but you can even a uh, theme colorizer. There we go. You can create your own new theme, which is it's very simple. Um, and you could choose whatever colors you want. I'm not gonna gonna go ahead and do the whole thing, but it's it's very simple. And once you're done with that, um, you could just go back to desktop layout and just apply it. Uh, okay. So the store you have. Let's see. I. I really like using uh, Sublime Text, so let's see if they have it. So you just have your search bar, and there you go. You have your application. So installing programs should uh, be of no hassle. Let's see if uh, Control-Alt-T works uh, for the terminal. Yep. So it's got console as the terminal emulator. 
And one thing that's interesting is, um, oops, the file manager, I don't know why, but the file manager for some reason is not the default one. It's using, uh, let's see, which one? Nemo. Uh, it looks good. It looks like a native application. Looks uh, nicely integrated. Uh, but yeah, for some reason, it's not the default KDE one. So keep that in mind if that's something important to you. Uh, but yeah. And then for utilities, you have the Latte Doc. You have a um, kind of like a Google Maps type thing. And you have all the essential programs that you would need. Um, and just seeing that this is something that is based off of a distro that's already uh, very stable. I've uh, used Linux Mint about a year and a half ago, and it was very stable. I really liked it. And just knowing that it's built on top of that, um, and it offers all the stability that you would want, uh, knowing the fact that you also get... Um, more up-to-date software and seeing at least with this version in particular seeing how well the KDE desktop environment has been implemented um, it, it's very nice you know maybe this is a bit too feature rich for some people uh, but I think if you're a beginner and this is the first time you've uh, installed Linux or whatever if you get this screen, it's very easy. You can see the welcome screen, which has a lot of useful um, information there. You can really easily adjust the layouts and themes of your desktop to a more familiar uh, look, which is really nice. And this is something that I've been trying to advocate in my channel is being flexible when it comes to Linux. You know, uh, I've made videos where I turn KDE Plasma and make it look like Windows 10 or Mac OS. And some people are like, why would you even want to do that? Well, I personally wouldn't want to copy a, like a different operating system to its entirety, but maybe, you know, some people just like the style, they like the look. Um, or maybe if, if they're new users, they just want something that's more familiar. <laughs> Hence why this name right here is familiar. Uh, people just... They want it to be easier for them. And, and I like how this gives you a hassle-free experience of changing that because you could you could change uh, your style to fit all of these without a problem using vanilla plasma, but uh, just having this, um, these settings here, uh, it, it's very nice. You know, it's uh, very simple. And it's not even just about customization and theming and whatnot like i said when it comes to stability when it comes to uh the software and whatnot this has it all it's very good and yes if, if, as you can see these lists right here are, are quite long filled with software some people might think oh well this is too much for me uh i i haven't taken a look into it if there is a, a more minimal iso version uh, but all of these tools are very helpful uh, especially when it comes to drivers or if it comes to uh, partitioning disks. Um, you know, it just has everything. And I think for a beginner, that's good. You know, you might think, well, it may confuse a, begin a beginner, but um, I think that having it like this is good. Um, so really, that's, that's it uh, for now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's maybe anything else that I would want to bring up. There's probably some stuff that I forgot to talk about, but as a whole, I think that uh, this is definitely a good uh, distro for beginners. Um, and I think that it would definitely rival something like Ubuntu or uh, Elementary OS or even Linux Mint itself. Um, and if you take a look at the classic version, of course, it offers the Cinnamon desktop environment. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was basically it. Let me know if you have any thoughts or anything in the comment section below. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.